Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Wayne, KO4HFT. And his question is this. He wants to put up some sort of a do-it-yourself 30-foot mast. As my assistant Tegan and I have discovered, that's not necessarily easy because it's got to be strong enough that it just bend back over on you when you put the thing up. There are some masts out there, flagpole masts is what they are, the 20 feet or 30 feet. Some people use those. It will need to be guide, in spite of what the antenna instructions say. Guy it, because if you put an antenna out like this, you are pulling on the side of that thing. And when the wind hits the antenna, it just acts on the lever point, And somewhere in there, that antenna will bend or break. When you get up to 30 feet, you want to think about also guying it at the 15-foot point, too. So two sets of guys. We kind of did that with one of our 30-foot masts. I found one on Amazon. It wasn't too dreadfully expensive, so I got it. But boy, it sure flops around when you got the thing up there. We had to put the thing up with a gin pole. It was a challenge, and now that it is summer, we need to do a little work on it to make it sure it's actually straight. It looks straight from the road, but it's not. It bends backwards over there. Now, the longest 20-foot mast I've put up is a the single piece mast, is a piece of Schedule 40 aluminum pipe about one and a quarter inch in diameter. Now pipe versus conduit, the number is either the inside of the pipe or the outside of the pipe, depending on which is which. But I got this at Recla Metals, which is our local metal salvage area, but they also carry new piping. The thing cost me a hundred bucks. But boy, is that thing strong. It's schedule 40. So it's not thin like conduit. It's thick. And that pipe stays up. I guide it at the top just to keep it from falling over. And then at the bottom of it out there, there's a plate underneath it to keep it up. I went and bought an identical pole to use as a gin pole when we had to lower the hex beam for some maintenance. Let me show you how a gin pole works. Here's your antenna mast on presumably something it can pivot on. And you've got your antenna on it. In my case, it's a hex beam. So you've got guys coming out here and here. You've got three guys. Okay, so this one right here, I laid out a 20-foot piece of a, that real sturdy aluminum pipe. I tried it with steel chain-link top fence rail, but it just bent. So this was strong enough. This has to be attached to something here with rope or something so it can't go this way. But you disattach that guy and attach it to the gin pole and then you've got a rope coming off the gin pole. Now here's what you do. You let the antenna down this way and the gin pole goes this way. So you can get to the point where instead of being vertical like that you've got the antenna over at the side, the gin pole up here and you get to a point where this is just going to fall over on you because of the lever factor on it. But this thing, you can walk this up with this rope. Now, once you get this thing over to the angle where you want to work on it, you tie this down to another stake, and it's going to stay there. Now, what I also did was I attached two guys to the gin pole right here parallel to the antenna at about, oh, 15 feet out on each side. I put ground stakes and attached them to that point right there. So the gin pole could only go in one direction. It couldn't go to the side. Because if it goes to the side, the whole thing falls down. So with a lot of work, it took us a lot of work to do this, but we were able to raise the gin pole until we got this antenna down to where we could put a, a ladder under it, an a extension ladder under it, to hold it up, and we had a person on that. Then up here, we had a step ladder with a couple people on either side, and we were able to get up and disconnect the antenna, which was like this at this point. Take that off, then this was stable, and we then mounted the hex beam to 
a small pole on the ground so that we could do all the maintenance and then reverse this to get the thing back up. Okay, now I've noticed since then we have a little more work to do. As it turns out, I've left the gin pole on the ground with all these attachments, so it's going to be real easy to lower it and uh, bring it back down. But that's what a gin pole does. The gin pole is, is this part right here. It's attached at a 90 degree angle to the actual mast. And a lot of people have put up a lot of antennas. You don't do this by yourself. You don't even do it with just two people. You need a third person who is a safety observer and whose only function is not to rush one to help what's needed, but if there is something that causes somebody to get hurt, to call in the US, it's 911. In other parts of the world, the emergency services number, like in the UK, it's 999. I think in New Zealand, it's like 111, and so on. By the way, pronounce this as 911, not 911, but 911. There was a case once where a young boy picked up the phone to contact the authorities about his mother who was in serious trouble and he couldn't get through. And the reason that he gave is, I found the nine key, but I couldn't find the 11 key. So say 911 to keep that from happening. Just a little safety thing there, but that's how a gin pole works. Now let's get to his question here. What material should he use for the pole? Well, the pole is going to have a lot of load on it at 30 feet. Wind is going to hit it. I had originally gotten some parachute cord to use for guys, but parachute cord stretches. There's a reason for that. When that chute opens, that's a heck of a sudden slowdown for the guy at the bottom. You've got to set it up so that there's a little bit of give so it doesn't break the guy's back or anything like that. That's why parachute cord gives, and that's why it's really lousy for guys. So I went ahead and bought from DX Engineering some Mastrant 8th inch black UV resistant guy rope that does not stretch at all. It will hold up for 400 pounds or so, and on my antennas there's no 400 pound load really under any circumstance that we would see. If you live in an area with extremely high winds like Florida or the Gulf Coast, you may want to go with something rather stronger. They do make what are called hurricane towers. These are towers that are usually self-standing. They're mounted in a whale of a concrete base and they will withstand 110, 120, 130 mile an hour winds. So this is a way to keep your tower up, if not your antenna. A lot of Yagi antennas at that point, max 80 mile an hour winds, they'll just fold up on you. But it's actually the tower that's the expensive part, not the Yagi. You can rebuild the Yagi or toss it and get a new one, whatever, but your tower is still standing, okay? And if it's guide properly, it will stand, although the guys can resonate in the wind. Let me show you some modeling that I did for my own information. A few years ago, I used uh, Easy NEC. It's an American-made modeling product. Version 7 is the latest. It's available free at EZNEC.com. Now, is there a steep learning curve? Oh, yeah. When I first started it, the learning curve was vertical. But the League at the time published a book on how to use it. They don't anymore. Maybe they'll bring it out now that Easy NEC is, is free. But I modeled a metal pole. This was 20 feet high, metal. It was actually the length of two pieces of chain link fence top rail. Okay, there at the middle, it's guide at the top with uh, non conducting guys. And then I put an antenna. Now, the, the antenna, it's just a dipole. What I did was I set this up so that this metal pole was various distances from the end of the dipole to here, okay? If this was within six inches, like you had wrapped around an insulator or something, the pole became part of the antenna, 
All right, so you were getting your current here, and on the pole on the other end, you were getting a current on that. So I started moving these two apart, and I found that about three feet from the top of the pole, that's one meter, from the top of the pole to the end of the antenna with some non-conductive rope was about right, and that this current curve kind of collapsed into the pole, okay? It's a non-linear thing. The further you move it away, the drastically better this is. I didn't want these to be part of the antenna. They're vertical, after all. Three feet on each end, three feet, okay? And it keeps the antenna from exciting the pole. Ish. I mean, obviously, there's some small amount. Now, if it's a fiberglass pole, you're not going to have that problem, but I'm not sure how sturdy that fiberglass pole is going to be. You will want to guy it at the top and about halfway down if that's 30 feet. But that's where the three-foot rule comes from. There you have it. We've taken a look at a variety of things that might talk about your antenna. I tried to throw in a little extra information for others who are watching this video. The key thing is you probably are going to want to use metal for sturdiness on that mast and put about three feet of rope between the top of the antenna and the end of the wire. Now, I put a pulley up at the top of the antenna so you can run that three feet and run it down to a place where you can tie it off. That way you can take the antenna down easily. Now, in other cases, if the rope slips off that pulley entirely, there's another pulley up there that's attached more uh, flagpole style. So you're pulling it like this. That will bring the top pulley all the way down to the ground along with the other pulley so you can re-thread it and hoist it like a flag back up to the top. I know it looks a little bit complicated, but it is much, much easier to use because we're forever putting up different antennas on there. Like I said, right now the Gazizu NFED half wave for 80 through 10, that antenna covers all at the same time the 80, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 meter bands, okay? Which is very nice because like my expensive Step IR antenna, will only transmit, it transmits on all bands, but only one at a time, okay? There's a little controller in here to set that up. I'm doing some whisper stuff, and I want it to be able to transmit on all those bands, and it does very nicely. So, there you have it. If you'd like to help support this channel, check for the links that are in the explanation of the video below. Until we next meet, 73.